It's Wednesday. It's time for another edition of Speed Chronicles here on the Rev TV YouTube channel. Thanks for joining. Thanks for checking it out at Todd Lewis Sports at Rev TV. Are the handles on Insta and X for thoughts, ideas, comments, feedback? Use the hashtag Speed Chronicles. This is something we started at the beginning of the summer, continuing through. It's evolving a little bit. We're going to see where it goes. We'll continue for a while. Just kind of a look at what's taking place in racing and motorsports, some of the bigger series, and not really results-driven. We'll talk about results a little bit occasionally when they relate to a another story or a bigger story or something else, but it's not really a, a list of who won and who were the podium finishers, etc. If you've joined us previously, thanks for checking it out. Thanks for coming back. Thanks to those visiting for the first time. We're at kind of a quiet part of the summer in terms of the racing season, because the Olympics has been all consuming for many, not me personally, haven't watched a lot of it, little dribs and drabs aware of the, some of the big stories and controversy, but that's some of the reasons why IndyCar is on a big break. NASCAR is on a big break. Of course, the U.S. television provider is all consumed with the Olympics right now. So everybody agreed, we'll take a step back and you guys use all your platforms to cover the Olympics. But still plenty of stories, still plenty of things to, to look at and talk about. And in fact, it does give us kind of an opportunity to catch our breath, do a little reset and see where we are and, and look at a few things that are that are taking place. IMSA is one series that's still going. If you haven't seen it yet, the latest episode of Rev Culture that debuted this past week on Rev TV. If it's not up right now on the YouTube channel, it will be shortly. If you've missed it or if you haven't caught one of the repeats, it is IMSA focused with a lot of good interviews and discussions with uh, IMSA president John Doonan, Robert Wickens, Parker Thompson, Connor Zilich, who boy, oh boy, is he a star on the rise. 18 years old now, just turned 18. He's a star on the rise. Jagger Jones is also another interesting story. So we have a couple of other interviews in there as well and uh, some, some cool stories. So I'd ask you to check it out if you get the opportunity. IMSA is racing uh, this coming weekend. They are at Road America. It just kind of seems like IMSA and Road America are made for one another. Big, beautiful, natural terrain road course. Lots of on-site for camping and, and being part of it. It's a really good fit there. It's a it's 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 a really good event, and that that track that I haven't been to in in too long now. But boy, is it ever something special to see! And usually provides some pretty great racing. We've got all the all the classes running at Road America as well. But everybody's quiet in terms of IndyCar and NASCAR, as I mentioned. Formula One did race this past weekend. Spa. Talk a bit about that in a second in the DQ of George Russell, but also want to talk about. NASCAR Canada, who finished up their Western swing with the stop at Edmonton International Raceway and 300 laps of racing there. Congratulations, Kevin Lacroix, scored a nice victory. It was, yes. Okay, let's get to the good stuff first. Super positive and good on Ron and Loretta Thiering for welcoming NASCAR and doing everything they can to, to put on a great show. And what a crowd. That's the biggest oval crowd uh, we've had so far this season. And, and that's fantastic. Really, really happy for you. Hope you sold a lot of food and drinks. But it was a great crowd. Enthusiastic, fun crowd. Always is when we go out west with the NASCAR Canada Series. I uh, wasn't at Saskatoon, of course, because I was in Toronto with the Indy. But the Edmonton crowd... Super fun, really enthusiastic, nice people, uh, welcoming and happy to have the, the series back. Nice to connect with some friends that haven't seen for a while out there. So that was great. 12 cars in the field was disappointing. Of course it is. You want a bigger field. You want more action. Uh, give the drivers credit for doing all they can to put on as, as good a show as you can. But 12 cars is, is disappointing. It's a disappointing number. You'd like more. They had 14 cars in Saskatoon, which is better, but... And that's also a disappointing field. This is the business reality of the series right now. And this is a tough year. Everyone will acknowledge that and recognize it. It's a hard year. It is a, it is a five-figure expense, and not just barely. It's a significant five-figure expense for teams to make the journey out west. Those costs will have gone up this year because it's a longer trip. Both races were on the weekend. Previously, it was a midweek race in Saskatoon and a weekend race in Edmonton. A little bit shorter, some fewer expenses in terms of travel and hotels and accommodation for staff and crew and all the rest of it. However, they shifted 
And it's a Saturday race in Saskatoon and a Saturday race in Edmonton this year. That adds to the expense, makes it harder for teams, and some simply cannot afford it. Those are the realities of the business. It's a big expense. Now, add that with the expansion of the East Coast Swing this year. Again, Newfoundland, long way, expensive. Oh, well, we added a race in Riverside. Yeah, true. In fact, two of them. But that also adds to the expense with a longer trip. So now you've got a big expense to go west, a big expense to go east, and it's simply out of reach for some of the teams. Full marks, full credit for those that did go and make the journey to support their series. And thank you to all the partners and sponsors who supported them and all the fans that have supported them as well. This is the, the business part that, that needs to be looked at and, and needs to be addressed. I don't know how it's going to shake out for next year. There are, you know, there are contracts and business relationships in place, but clearly having 12 or 14 cars at an event is not ideal. So you want to have more cars. What I will say, and I'm hopeful about, is that I had a lot of conversations with a number of different people when I was out west, and everybody wants this to work. Everybody wants to keep going out west to Edmonton, to Saskatoon. Maybe there's other places we can go as well. I don't know of any right now that are a good fit to add to the trip. A little work and investigating, maybe there's another one. Again, though, you have to consider the business aspect of it because the longer you stay away from home, the longer the expense. Not everybody's traveling to Europe on vacation this year. Some are staying closer to home. Some are not going at all. It changes and varies from year to year in your personal finances, so you make the right decision. And this is what teams are doing as well. So hopefully the business relationship can evolve and develop that it is a better situation for more teams to make the journey out west. The other issue is that there are not a lot of cars out west that teams and drivers own to participate in the NASCAR Canada series. So that presents a, prob a problem in terms of inventory, which means those interested now have to rent cars from someone in the East. Okay, so again, there's an expense involved with that, and it takes a great deal of dollars from a partner or partners to get involved and do that. How does this business situation evolve? I know that everyone wants to make it work. People are hopeful and will work hard to try to make it work. So let's do what we can to, to help and support and, and participate. And thanks to all the folks that came out in, in Edmonton, those in Saskatoon as well, for being supportive. Let's, uh, let's hope that we can make it a, a better show for you even next year with more cars and, and more people coming out to see and enjoy it. We're uh, off this week in terms of NASCAR Canada, but everybody's getting ready for a big event. The perhaps one of the, we'll say, marquee events on the on the season. It is one of my favorite events, period. Whichever series you're talking about in terms of events, Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières is one of my favorite events because of the way the town loves it and embraces it and welcomes it. And we're looking forward. There will be a big P field of cars there, north of 30 cars expected right now for Trois de Vier, which is great. And it's, it's a full weekend of racing as well, too. Uh, you've got sports cars, you've got uh, Centra Cup and uh, 1600s. Uh, it, it's, it's a great time and a great weekend. If you're looking for a fun travel race weekend, haven't done it, uh, want to explore and have the wherewithal to do it, highly recommend. Super fun going to uh, Trois de Vier. Town loves it. Everybody embraces it. Downtown's a, a, a lively atmosphere every night. Super fun. So that's coming up uh, next weekend for uh, NASCAR Canada and all those other series. I mentioned Formula One last weekend, who are now fully into their summer break, but no shortage of news, because as soon as they finish their race with the Mercedes 1-2 finish of George Russell and Lewis Hamilton, stepped on the scale, did a little scrutineering, and rut row, one5 kilograms underweight for George Russell, that means disqualification. It was a, a tremendous race to watch at Spa. Again, a, an, an iconic track, beautiful facility, great racing, so many memorable uh, uh, parts of the circuit. George did a great job making the tires last. Uh, and some are speculating that's maybe what caught him out is more degradation, just a little bit light. That's the razor's edge that you're going against. I have no problem with the DQ, by the way. Those are the rules. Here's your minimum weight. 
don't achieve it, disqualification. I'm good with the harsh punishment, if you will, because it keeps people within the rules. This is the, the discussion sometimes about, oh, well, did they really mean to go underweight? No, of course not, but they did. These are the margins you're dealing with. They're so small, and sometimes that's going to happen. So it's unfortunate, but Lewis Hamilton gets the uh, the victory after being elevated from, from second spot. A um, couple of other little bits of Formula One news. Carlos Sainz has signed with Williams for a couple of years. He's out of a gig, needs some work, decided it's going to be Williams. I'm hopeful that him going will, will help Williams and allow them to continue development and move forward. Esteban Ocon is moving over to Haas in 2025. That's okay. They still have a long way to go. They have a lot to uh, lot to do, and that team's really lost their personality since uh, Gunther Steiner was uh, ousted. I don't. Know, I don't know if it's good from a, a, a productive success standpoint that that they've made the change, but he's missed as part of uh, the personality of, of Formula One. Um, and Checo Perez is going to stay with Red Bull for the rest of the season. Apparently, that was much kicked around and speculated and discussed that he was going to be replaced by someone, one of those possibilities being Daniel Ricciardo, for whatever reason. I'm with JV on this. What's he still doing in Formula One? I was saying this two years ago. He is, his best before date has expired. He's not the answer to Red Bull. Um, Perez is obviously having some difficulties, and uh, I, I think maybe the the break and the re mental reset that's going to allow is, is going to help him. But I, it's, that's certainly not the answer, is to replace him with Daniel Ricciardo. Uh, we'll see what happens. Un undoubtedly, there will be more uh, Formula One news that comes out over the next few weeks while the series uh, remains on their summer holiday. As mentioned, it's IMSA this weekend, Road America. You can catch that one and enjoy it. Or if you prefer, and I would encourage, go out, support some of your local racing, wherever it happens to be. If there's a show running on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, or holiday Monday, whenever it is, because it's a holiday in many parts of, of Canada right now, go ahead. And uh, it's, it's worthwhile supporting. And we appreciate the support that you're giving to your local tracks as well. Thanks for checking out this edition of Speed Chronicles at Todd Lewis Sports at Rev TV. The social handles again for thoughts, ideas, comments, and feedback. We'll come back with another edition on Wednesday.